Welcome to Inside the Honors College, where we believe that wisdom and virtue is found when we learn together. Join us as we take an inside look at a community dedicated to educating the next generation of disciples and scholars. I'm Abby DeVos. I'm Taina Esteves. And it's crazy how frequently people at APU, this may just be a California thing as well, but in my experience, people at APU kind of gush over the like flora fauna that goes on. As flora as, fauna. Please, please. I'm an honors student. I'm oh. going to use the terms. Yeah, like the, the amount that they were staring out at the flowers as we were actively having our conversation and the amount of times they brought it up in the conversation I was like oh wow you guys really enjoy this that's good that's good for you I think I'm a more rainy day inside person but it's great it was it was a, a blessing to be around that type of energy for sure <laughs> I will say I'm a victim of this though because Ty you are you yourself <laughs> told me the other day that you witnessed the flowers turning towards the it's sun true. and I teared up yeah because that is the cutest thing that I've ever seen and spring is here and it is a joyful thing so yeah yeah, this yeah. interview had so much joy in it, just in general. Yes, ga- gazing at the beautiful flowers, mm-hmm. but also just talking about what the spiritual life office has to offer mm-hmm. and the resources that we often don't see. We see a lot of chapel requirements and D groups sometimes, but a lot of conversations to be had and people to engage with that I think they shed some really good light on. So yeah, it was a great interview. Absolutely. So without further ado, let's get right in. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm here with two wonderful people, great presences on APU's campus. If you both could introduce yourselves for our audience. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, my <laughs> name is Koba Canales. I serve as Dean of Spiritual Life. It's great to be with you today. And I am Karen Rugley. I am the director in the Office of Service and Discipleship and a campus pastor. Beautiful, beautiful. So this is going to be our segment kind of talking on more of, like we said, the spiritual life. Uh, going to get into some questions here, kind of more of the fun areas. First off, does your office offer any snacks? Oh, yeah. We have the best snacks. OSD has very, <laughs> very good snacks. We have like a whole snack rack in our office. We've got really good water. Apparently on campus, we have the best water, people okay, say. Okay. So people definitely stop by and fill up the entire hydro um, on their way to class. But yes, snacks are a must. They're critical for us. I concur. I concur. Koba, opinions? Yeah. So my office is right across the way from OSD and we're both located just south of Cougar Dome on East Campus. So I find myself going back and forth between Karen's office, (laughs) which has all the snacks all the time. Uh, But in, in our side of the office, we have a few folks who like to bake. So there's always cookies out there. There's yesterday there was a pound cake. Um, And sometimes uh, we have uh, folks who bring donuts into the office. So if you're looking for a nice little treat or a snack, you can't go wrong if you're hanging out between the offices of Spiritual Life, OSD, Chapel, Pastoral Care. Yeah, I can confirm uh, immediately upon entry was offered a homemade cookie. So (laughs) yes, absolutely (laughs) verified, verified homemade snacks. I'm not surprised. (laughs) Awesome. If you could describe your respective offices like your personal personal office in three words, what would you use to describe them? You go first, bro. Okay. <laughs> like the work of the office or like what it feels like to be the in our feel, office? The feel, oh, the vibes. Okay. What is it? What is yeah. it? Like, what like, like office? this office that we're sitting in right now, Koba's office? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I'd say uh, family. Aww. Experience. Okay. Fun. Aww. All right, all right. And then we'll do your office. My physical space. Yeah, so where I sit. Space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aesthetic. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay. And a color-coded bookshelf. Okay. Um, a little haphazard. <laughs> um, my TBR pile on my desk is outrageous. Um, the sign of a great reader. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, so I, think I, need, I think I need uh, a little bit of clarification. T- TBR, my to be read pile. To yes, yes, read. yes. That's good. Great job. I also was read. just operating okay. like people would right. know what that means. Thank my you, my to be read pile. <laughs> Um, okay, so aesthetic, uh, a little bit haphazard, and I would say warm. My office feels, I love coming into it every day. It feels like a little warm blanket. I also do actually have a blanket um, on the back of my chair because it does get physically, temperaturally cold, <laughs> but it, it's got warm vibes. And I think her Karen's office might have the best view on campus. I do. Oh. If she I looks do. out of her window, she she can see Cougar Walk mm-hmm. and then maybe maybe the mountains. Yes, I can. Yeah. And there's a beautiful tree, actually, that's right outside the Modern Languages building. 
It's a magnolia tree that blooms twice a year in these beautiful pink flowers. And so I get to watch it. It's done blooming. It's now green leaves, but I get to watch it bloom twice a year. There's also one outside your office, Coba. Yeah, yeah. So you should definitely come by. Oh, nice. Flowers on campus have actually been something, especially since it's been more rainy. Oh. Seeing like spots of color has been has been a nice little high. The other day I stopped to take pictures of some irises because I was like, look at how beautiful these are. I hadn't seen these before. They were bright and purple and lovely. I'm anticipating a, a theme in this segment, maybe being stopping and smelling the roses. Mm. I feel like I just had to put feel, that out there before mm, we get there. Mm, mm, Y'all hear the, the mm, verbal snaps coming mm, on? That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then our closing off question, what what is your favorite part about your office? Now, this one is the more like holistic office, not just mm. your physical room. Mm. I would say um, camaraderie and a sense of teamwork. I think mm -hmm. um, you never feel alone in this space. Uh, and that, that helps when you're dealing with challenges or trying to solve something or just need a little bit of feedback. And uh, so regularly, you know, we're in and out of meetings, going to campus, et cetera. But when we're back here in the office, it's not uncommon to see us kind of leaning a shoulder on somebody's doorway, asking a quick question, getting some quick feedback. So I think that's probably one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. I would definitely echo that sentiment. I love the connection that all of us have. We do this work from a deep place of calling. And so we resonate with each other in that space. And so we get to kind of embody that alongside of each other. I think another thing that I would add is that I, um, I love that we get to, we get to continue the legacy of even how APU has started. And so I think about the, the ways that the individual staff and students that come through our office really are part of something bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. Like even our physical space. So our, our building, the OSD building actually was the first chapel that we had when we moved to this location in 1946. Yeah. And so when, when you go up the stairs to get to those snacks, that little snack rack that we have, <laughs> um, you're, you're walking up the stairs to the original chapel stage. And so I love that every time we walk through our doors, we're reminded of the women and men who have come before us and the ways that God has moved in the spaces that we find ourselves to be in on campus and the, the ways that God will continue to move once we walk out that door for the last time, whenever that might be. That's so nice. I did not know that. I learned something new about APU every time I talk to you guys. So thank oh, you so much for that. You're welcome. Um, kind of using that as a transition into a little bit about the services and resources that your guys' offices offer. What's something that students can expect upon either walking into your office, if they were like looking for something? What what would what would that journey slash process be like for Besides students? the snacks. Besides the snacks, Got obviously. It. Okay. I mean, it might just be they go get the snacks and walk right, out. Right, for the right, students right. who don't want to do that. <laughs> Uh, you want to start? Yeah. I, I'm, one of the things that I would say, so on our, we kind of have different cultures in mm -hmm. the different spaces that we have. A lot of our student leaders uh, spend time over in Karen's side of the office, so in the OSD. Mm. Um, so I'll reflect on this side because this, yeah. this is like the administration operation side. Um, so in a lot of ways, I think, you know, a lot of the things that students come in for is kind of talk about like, you know, whether whether it be a, you know, a request to to attend chapels online or, you know, a discrepancy. So uh, really, it's kind of a service like like uh, providing customer service yeah. to our students to make sure they're having a good experience, re respond to their requests, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but generally speaking, I think um, the, the nice thing about the the team and the folks is just a willingness to always as soon as a student walks in the door, hey, how's it going? Sit down, talk for a second, and usually leads to some pretty fun conversations. Um, the cool thing about being right next to the chapel office is you never know if like one time we're having a really serious meeting and then next thing you know, there's like uh, different instruments that are going off because yep. somebody's trying, <laughs> you know, working on something or uh, mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of it's kind of neat to just see the different ways that the space transforms mm -hmm. depending on what purpose um, is, is kind of taking place in that moment. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And just so it's established, OSD stands for Office of Service and Discipleship. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And so OSD, Office of Service and Discipleship, because, <laughs> um, you know, we love our acronyms. Um, 
it, our office is the office that really helps students with both their being and their doing. Mm. Our being is really centered around helping students figure out who God is and what God has created them to do. We do that through um, small group intentional discipleship opportunities, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, really chances for students to explore together and have honest conversation about who God is and what God is doing in their life, kind of living life alongside one another mm -hmm. through deep groups through, um, yeah, just unpacking chapel experiences. So kind of that, that sweet space of formal and informal, really discipleship focused conversation. Yeah. And then we get the chance to help students with the doing of, um, their being and put that into practice. And so not just are we helping them figure out who God has made them to be and what God has made them to do. We want them to actually then go out and do it through providing service opportunities and we have service opportunities locally, nationally, and internationally. So uh, our local engagement opportunities are for, you know, something for you to do every week. So you could go and tutor in an after-school tutoring program every single week. You could come and hang out with people who are part of our special needs community and uh, on Fridays do Young Life Camp with them and Young Life Club. And so that's super fun. So lots of different things like that. We also realize that not every student has the time and space in their schedule, particularly you honors college students, you got a lot going on. <laughs> um, just a number of things, one or two. And so we offer one-time service opportunities in our local community. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's like at Thanksgiving, there's a local church that's going to be doing a, a turkey drive. You can come and you can hand out turkeys just one time and you can get some service credits for that. So we do that. We also offer opportunities for students to serve nationally and internationally. Most of those are done in longer capacity capacities over our spring break, our Thanksgiving break, and then our summer break. Mm -hmm. Most of those also have a cost that's associated with them, but we walk students through the fundraising process and through that journey because we never want students, uh, the cost that's associated with that to kind of deter you from participating. But yeah, that's a lot about what we get to do in our office. Absolutely. And so I'm hearing kind of like a heart conversation in the different sides, right? Because this is chapel services technically over here. And then we got OSD over here with Cameron. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it feels like a student who is looking for either the like engagement piece, like, you know, like, how do I get involved with chapel? Like, what does it mean to like, what is our travel service about? Kind of those like deeper questions in line with that thinking, Koba, what has that experience been like for you? Like that, like walking alongside students, if you know any like particular mm -hmm. honor students experiences as well. Like, what does that feel like as a person working in the office, living life with the student body with chapel, which is like a requirement, you know, where there's always tension with that in the students, which I hear as well. What is that kind of journey? been like in discussing dealing with either the conversations that arise from chapel or like any anything like that mm -hmm. you kind of get my drift yeah 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 um so kind of conceptually just about a hundred percent of our students particularly traditional undergraduate students will engage with chapels yeah right and yeah because it's a requirement and mm -hmm. something that always has been for our you know since the beginning of mm -hmm. apu's existence yeah. um in terms of stewardship and leadership there's Currently, probably about 70 students who are speaking into chapels on mm -hmm. a regular basis. And students might not be aware of that, but uh, we have over 40 students that are rotating on our various chapel bands um, that are all student led. Every once in a while, you have a staff jump in there, but that's mm -hmm. kind of rare. Um, so the majority of them are student led. Um, we have a SALT team, which stands for Service and Leadership Team, connected to our, uh, our Kaleo um, evening, every other Thursday night gathering, and then a number of student interns, chapel interns, graphic interns that are speaking into it. So it's kind of neat to see that there are these very uh, formalized way to get involved, Yeah. Um, which right now we're actually right in the middle of that. So like, you, I wouldn't be surprised if we look out my door right now, you see somebody walking in holding a guitar <laughs> mm -hmm. case because mm -hmm. they're probably uh, having an audition for, you know, for chapel leadership for next year. Um, so that's kind of some of the more formalized ways. Mm -hmm. um, one of the neat things things about the way that we've come together as a spiritual life area is that uh, whereas maybe at one point we were a little bit more compartmentalized, yeah. um, we tend to now see all of our student leaders um, as kind of all part of spiritual life. And mm. so in that regard, um, there's a lot of students that are able to contribute, ideate, even throw out 
suggestions and recommendations like, hey, we thought about this. Have we implemented this? Um, so that's been pretty neat. Uh, specifically, I think of like our marketing team yeah. um, who has done a phenomenal job of like capturing moments within chapel, making sure folks are hearing about that, um, even asking students to share testimonies about what God's been doing in their mm-hmm. lives. Mm-hmm. All of those things are kind of recent recent and new in terms of being able to to see the full picture of what, what God, what's God doing on our campus, how our chapels involved with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it's a, w- one of the unique things about the APU experience. I've had a chance to visit other colleges where chapels are optional and, uh, and there definitely is a different vibe in yeah. terms mm-hmm. of engagement and participation. And I know there's always going to be kind of different groups of students, some who are like, man, I, uh, I'm not too sure how excited I am about this experience. Sure. Um, but the one thing that continues to motivate us even along those lines is that um, consistently over time, uh, we do something called an alumni survey. Mm-hmm. And it's not our survey. It's through the alumni office. And one of the things they ask is, hey, what do you miss most about your experience at APU? And consistently, consistently, students say, I miss those moments where we gather together to worship in chapel. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's one of those things where it's almost like, even if there's maybe not a sense that this is the, I see this as uh, the most significant experience in this exact moment, mm-hmm. uh, longitudinally, it continues to to be clear that it is uh, a special time. Mm-hmm. And so we, you know, we maintain a commitment to that and recognize that God can, you know, uh, move and stir and work in us, even if we woke up that morning not too excited about, uh, mm-hmm. you know, oh man, I got to go do this thing. In addition to all the other, like Karen mentioned, assignments and reading and right. uh, triple mm-hmm. majors that you know that <laughs> all you guys have. So mm-hmm. it's beautiful. Yeah, no, absolutely. Chapel conversations, I think, have been around forever and will be around forever. So yeah, yeah that was that was a great informative perspective on it on a student end for sure. And kind of bringing us a little bit to not a complete close, but I want to open it up to both of you. If there was going to be one thing, a piece of advice, um, an experience, a specific type of resource or service that your guys' offices or people offer, what's one thing that you would want the student body to know about what they can do or participate in with your your spaces? That's a really powerful question. <laughs> I know bringing um, it down to one can be hard, but yeah. just, if you want to, if you want to leave, leave a heart message to anyone that might be looking for a space, what type of space would your office be able to provide for that? Gosh, our, I think our office provides so many spaces. One of the things that I would leave students with, which is a little bit uh, we'll just say interesting. Doesn't matter. Um, I don't need to qualify everything that I'm going to say. I I think I wouldn't want students to miss out on the opportunities that are that spiritual life just in general provides for them. But I also wouldn't want them to miss out on engaging with the local church. Mm. I think sometimes there's this perspective that our office, um, spiritual life in general, be it we provide chapel, we provide service opportunities, we provide small group discipleship. Um, we have preaching, we have teaching, we have all of those things and they're all super powerful and super good, but there's also so much to be found in the local church Mm -hmm. that there is something that happens when you get off of this campus and you're surrounded by a diverse multi-generational body of believers who are coming alongside, who are also, for many of them, having Sunday experiences and having discipleship experiences and having service experiences. And so I think that there's something rich to be found in recognizing that that doesn't just happen on this campus, but it's happening all throughout the world every week, day in and day out. And sometimes I think it's really easy to become myopic Mm -hmm. when you're in college and really focus on like, this is the stuff that I've got going on and all of that. But if we're not setting you up for success, like to actually find a church body after college, where like to Koba's point, where you don't have chapel at the ready, there's not someone who's like, you know, standing on cougar walk, challenging you to be in a D group where you're not raising money to travel around the world in order to get your, you know, university required service. I think that you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it if you're if you're really just focused on everything that we do here, which, again, very good, very powerful. There is something also to be said for recognizing that at some point your APU journey will end, but your faith development is 
it won't, won't and shouldn't. And so how are you also taking all the stuff that you're doing here and plugging that into the local church? Because we are better. Local church bodies are better because of your engagement. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just taking a moment to That's say in that, yeah. Stuff. Okay, I'll throw out a, um, a, a vision. Mm-hmm. That's connected to some of the stuff Karen and I have been talking about. What if there were a group of students who decided they wanted to pour into each other's lives, uh, speak into one another, encourage each other, and allow that to be influenced and shaped by God's word? Mm. And so they committed to a small group, right? Uh, And they can get connected to that through D groups if they would like. Um, And what if that same small group committed to an ongoing um, uh, ministry of serving our local community? Mm. Um, And then through that, raised funds together to engage in a summer uh, experience where they all went on a mission trip together through our global engagement office. Um, All that to say, I'm throwing that out there because maybe there's a group that wants to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think I value... So culturally and in terms of relationships and formation, we still tend to see things and by we, I mean like the APU culture, Western American culture, mm-hmm. very individualistic. Yep, yep. What's my right. spiritual growth? What's yep. my experience this summer? What's my, and you know, the, the my word, um, but our is more of how Jesus saw things. Yeah. Um, we instead of me. Yeah. And so in that regard, I think the depth that comes from experiences where we recognize, uh, you know, we don't need to have 100 best friends. Um, it'd be great to be kind to a hundred people, yep. but, uh, but sometimes you have a crew of folks and, and if you kind of gather around a value and if that value is the gospel of Jesus Christ, mm. um, that, that has the power to really, uh, create transformative experiences. So again, yeah. I know, I don't know that we've ever had a group that has, uh, done things in that way, but I throw it out there simply to say, if you really wanted to lean into what spiritual life is hoping to see students interact with, those would be, that, that would be a pretty neat trajectory mm-hmm. that would create spaces to be in, encouraged, motivated, challenged, equipped in a chapel space, mm-hmm. formed through dialogical conversation, yeah. back and forth, question yeah. asking, praying, crying, laughing together that uh, spills off of our campus mm-hmm. into impact in uh, kind of the world outside of APU. I think that's like the essence of our prayer and desire mm-hmm. for, and again, not in that exact way, yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of using it as a hyperbole yeah. to demonstrate, you know, those are our values. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what we'd like to do the best we can to create and facilitate spaces where that kind of formation can happen. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate you both and your presence on campus. Um, and to anyone listening out there, if you need a space to look at the flowers, come together mm-hmm. in discipleship and community, feel free to stop by the spiritual life offices that we have here on campus. Thank you both so much again. Thank, thank you. you. that I started off my statement uh, talking about how everyone talks about the flowers and be ending the literal podcast being like, hey guys, if you need a place to go look at the flowers, <laughs> go outside to Coop Walk and just soak them in. You are a victim. I am a victim. <laughs> you participate. <laughs> no, they're pretty. I mean, like I said at the beginning, right? I was like, oh, the flowers turn towards the sun and that's just, it's just so nice. It's just such little things. Exactly, exactly. I did love what Karen had to say at the, like near the end there talking about, you know, your spiritual development is not only dependent or like only can only be cultivated in this like one office doing these one things um, in those certain spaces that these are things that you'll be able to grow and should be able to Mm. grow from outside of these spaces and in different communities and environments. And yeah, so I, I personally for myself really took away this like let me engage actively in my, you know, spiritual development outside of what it means to be at an institution that happens to have faith integration stuff. Um, but actually, you know, wanting to do that for myself and talking to people and like growing, growing my own faith because of myself. Yeah. So, and using nice. the community that you have around you exactly. to grow that faith with. And that's so funny. As honor students specifically, we have so many goals to, you know, create scholars and disciples mm-hmm. and what that looks like in the honors college to get to know your identity in God and spiritual life and honors college, I feel like have so many overlapping goals in this idea of figuring out who you are as a child of God, what your role is as that, what your role is in yeah, exactly in this world, through that worldview from a perspective of faith. And so specifically as Honors College students, Ty, like you were saying, engaging in our community with that goal of 
taking our spiritual life into our hands and doing yeah. that with community outside of spaces that are just built for specifically that and mm-hmm. how it can bleed into every space in life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. I mean, the two of us just said the words engaging in spaces a lot of times, but <laughs> I do think it holds true. It holds true. And thank you all so much for taking an inside look at a community dedicated to educating the next generation of disciples and scholars. See you next time on Inside the Honors College.